and some in Indiana. I can't remember which ones I heard. It's just I'm so tired all the time. I'm always tired, you know, and, and sad. And what I don't like is this guy in Marion trying to take credit for my act. He didn't fold the clothes. He didn't fold the clothes, did he? No. No. Because he didn't break the zipper, and he didn't feel bad about it, and that's why I folded the clothes. <laughs> so I review dozens of movies and TV shows each year, and this guy... He's at the very top of my list for 2022 with his chilling performance as Larry Hall, serial killer in Blackbird. Good morning, Paul. Oh man, Trevor, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. This is, it's really exciting to get to talk about work you're proud of. I, th I think sometimes when you do a TV show or a film, you're not real happy with how it turned out. It, these things can be pretty dreadful, but this has been nothing but fun for me. And it's it was so exciting to watch. But for those who haven't seen the Apple TV limited series, what's Blackbird about? Blackbird is about a young man who goes to prison for 10 years on weapons charges, drug charges, uh, a litany of things. And in that sentencing, about a year and a half in, he is tasked or at least given the opportunity to get his sentence reduced and, and take off eight and a half years of the 10 year sentence. If he goes to a maximum security prison undercover, befriends this serial killer, Larry Hall, and gets a forced confession out of him so that Larry stays behind bars and can't get his appeal or uh, or get released. So it it, it really is kind of like The Departed meets Shawshank Redemption meets The Silence of the Lambs. It's this really heavy, gritty drama. Yeah. And so I'm actually based here in Indiana, which is where Larry Hall grew up. What'd you learn about his past, like red flags or anything that could have alerted about his intentions in the future? Oh, it's so sad. You know, I think so many of us want to believe in the goodness of, of and kindness and normality of strangers. You know, when somebody stops me in LA, like a, a homeless person, I'm always quick to ask them their name, shake their hand. If I have cash on me, I'll give them two, three, four bucks and, and tell them, Hey, I'm praying for you or something. You know, I, I have these types of interactions with people all the time, not to say I'm some do-gooder who is trying to save the homeless population. I just mean like, I, I see everybody as the same and don't really think about the danger that could be incurred either based on a neighborhood I'm in or based on me being some form of uh, celebrity to somebody. So if, if I'm doing that, all the more would a 14 or 18 year old girl be vulnerable when a van pulls up and, and tries to engage them in conversation. So I, I would just warn people, you know, uh, you, you being friendly doesn't mean making yourself vulnerable. Those two things can be separate. You can be kind to someone and still have boundaries or keep a distance. And that's in all manners of life, I think. Excellent piece of advice. And so you get into the mindset of a serial killer. How do you separate that once the cameras stop rolling? Oh, gosh, I I, I made an analogy this morning with with a, a female journalist where I said playing Larry is like someone holding their hand over a candle's flame. You do it because like this is a neat party trick. I knew this for three or four seconds. Then you hit five or seven or eight seconds and you go, all right, I've kind of proven my point. Can I take my hand off this thing? And when you do, you, oftentimes you're yanking it away. So with Larry, I had my hand over the candle and I couldn't wait to yank it away and, and get back to being Paul. Yeah. And last question, uh, what was it like to work with the late Ray Liotta in his final TV role? It was one of the great pleasures of my career. I'll never forget it. It was brief, but it was so meaningful. Ray was such a sweet guy. He gave me a big hug on set and gave me his phone number and said, let's, let's go grab a bite to eat. I want you to meet my, my girl. And, uh, and you know, I I'll, I'll have to go back through his filmography. Cause if I'm being honest, I haven't seen all of his work. And now that I've, I've met him and worked with him, it would be really fun to, find a way to celebrate him by rewatching his work. And, and I know that, you know, if, if there's any award to win in the future, that's one of those names that I always want to shout out and make people remember that Ray 
was and and just still is one of our greatest actors in our in our industry. Well, awesome. Yeah. Best of luck at the SAG Awards. Definitely must see Blackbird, Apple TV. Thanks. Thanks, man. I so appreciate that. And shout out to Indianapolis and all the SAG voters throughout Indiana. The fact that I'm nominated is an absolute career highlight. It's very overwhelming. I never wanted this for you. I wanted a totally different life. A steady paycheck kids, a family. Dad. Tell me there's a way out of this. Not a quick one. We would like you to transfer to another prison and befriend someone to elicit a confession. We suspect that this man killed 14 women, but we only have one of the bodies. Larry has vivid dreams. Tell me about him. In my dreams, I kill women. Those are just dreams. In this prison, where are the guys? Maximum security specializing in the criminally insane. You want me to check into hell? And befriend the demon. Not for all the money in the world. How about freedom? Paul's convictions on appeal. He could win and walk. You have the chance to stop him. Don't approach him too early, or he'll know we sent you for him. Why are you looking at me like that? Like you know me. If it gets out that you're here to snitch, that's going to be a very unfortunate day. Accelerate your timetable. If he walks, he'll kill again and again. If you think you could be in danger, you are in danger.